Hey there, welcome to Synthseeker. Uh, this is a really fast video. Uh, I got a question on a YouTube video specifically about the um, MIDI sort of patch tools, the patch control pack uh, that came out. And uh, someone had a question specifically around the Minotaur. We were trying to troubleshoot, uh, doing some debugging. I thought I would, uh, the simplest thing is to just, let's make a quick video that shows exactly how um, I load this thing into my system and uh, and basically walk you through the steps for setting it up um, and this is really it works for the way i set it up because of the nature of max for live devices and the hardware and things like that you can set it up in other configurations um, but uh, they're not guaranteed to work so i'm going to show you exactly what i do to make it work um, again not a professional product it's free it's just a utility that i use i put it out there for you guys um, so hopefully we can get this running um, so so specifically around the Minotaur, if you go to uh, this URL, it's linked in the description, uh, you'll get a little directory listing here. You can save uh, or download this uh, file, the patch control pack.zip. Save that somewhere. Okay, we'll get that down. We'll open it up. All right, and then once we get that up and open, you're going to see a bunch of little AMXD files. Those are all Macs for live devices. Specifically, we're going to just look at the Minotaur, but the process is the same for all of them. Um, with Ableton uh, up, you basically drag this AMXD over into your user library. Okay, anywhere, you can go anywhere in there. I'm just going to leave it at the top level right now. Um, and that effectively installs the, the uh, plugin into Max for Live, uh, your Max for Live device into Ableton. So. Now I've got a MIDI track here. Okay, uh, the MIDI track is running. Let's show you how this is set up. All right, we're using an external instrument plugin. It's going out one of my MIDI uh, ports. I'm using DIN MIDI. I'm not using USB MIDI, although it would work with USB MIDI. But I'm going out a DIN MIDI on channel one. Uh, it's going out to the Minotaur. The audio for the Minotaur is coming in on an audio device. I've got it on this channel, Minotaur Audio, uh, and it's coming in. Okay, so that's that's basically, if you check the Ableton manual, again, link in the description for how to use the external device, uh, external instrument device. If this is just plain old standard running MIDI out to a synth and pulling the audio back in. Okay, so once that's there, before, right, you can get... Um, uh, before uh, the instance of this plugin, you want to drag the patch control in front of it somewhere. It can go anywhere in front of it, okay? But we'll put it right here, at the very front of the chain, okay? Moog Minotaur patch control, Moog Minotaur, however you want to pronounce it. Um, and as far as how this device works, it's, it's just sending patch and bank change messages. It's actually just sending patch change messages because the Minotaur doesn't have banks. So it sends from zero to 127, which is basically the 128 uh, patches available, slots, preset slots available on the Minotaur. Now, the Minotaur is upgraded here to firmware 2.0. It's the newest firmware, and you will want to do that. Okay, so again, link in the description to the Moog website where you can get the latest firmware for it, but you do need to be on uh, firmware 2.0 of the Minotaur. Uh, and then once it's in place, Clicking through here, which will take you through the presets in the system. Okay, now Moog makes a very excellent sort of VST MIDI control device. I'm not using it, okay? It's in, not in the chain. And I have no idea what would happen if you tried to put them both in there. It might work, but it might not. Um, so I basically use that to build presets on the Minotaur offline. I basically build my... Um, any programming I do on the Minotaur, I pull up the uh, the app for editing the device, pull up the editor, because it'll run standalone. And I sit there and I play with my Minotaur, make all the presets, save them out, load them onto the device. And then when I'm performing or when I'm playing, I just use this simple device to um, do patch changes and things like that. There was a question on whether there was a bug uh, that this wouldn't respond to odd numbered things, and it seems to be working. As I walk through the presets, both even and odd numbers are working. Um, one thing you may notice is uh, when you turn the knob here, um, the 
plugin itself sort of waits for you to finish turning rather than send, you know, a uh, hundred, if you crank the knob from zero to 127, rather than send 127 patch change messages and sort of flood the Minotaur with that, it waits until you stop turning the knob, looks at what number you're on, and then sends that. And that takes about, I think, 50 milliseconds or so of latency that I intentionally put in there. So if you turn the knob on, like if I've got this map to an external control surface, right, we can go through it and nothing will change on the Minotaur until I stop. So uh, when you're moving through here, you do have to turn the knob relatively slowly, but that's why we gave you the plus and minus button, so you could just tap through it if you need to. Um, but basically that's it. So drag, a, uh, download the file, unzip it, drag it into your user library. It goes in a MIDI track or an instrument track in front of the external instrument interface, uh, and you should be good to go. You do have to be on firmware 2.0 on your Minotaur 2.0 or greater, I'm not even sure what the most recent one is, but I know I'm at at, at least 2.0. Um, that's it, and uh, have fun. It, that is the same process for all of the other um, patch control devices. They basically go in front of the instrument, uh, and uh, really that's about it. Thanks, and <laughs> as always, you are watching Synth Seeker. Have a great night.